Imagine you are flying a jet fighter at 47,000 feet above a massive thunderstorm. Suddenly, your engine fails and you have no choice but to eject. You are plunged into a dark, freezing and violent world of lightning, hail and rain. You have no idea how long you will survive or if you will ever see the ground again. This is the incredible story of William Rankin, the man who fell through a thunderstorm and lived to tell the tale. William Rankin was a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Marine Corps and a veteran of World War II and the Korean War. He was an experienced and skilled pilot who had flown over 100 combat missions. On July 26, 1959, he was flying from Massachusetts to South Carolina, along with his wingman, Herbert Nolan. They were flying F-8 Crusaders, supersonic jet fighters that could reach speeds of over 1,000 miles per hour. As they approached their destination, they encountered a huge thunderstorm that peaked at 45,000 feet. To avoid it, they climbed to 47,000 feet and maintained a speed of Mach 0.82, or about 624 miles per hour. They were almost ready to descend when Rankin heard a loud bump and rumble from his engine. He looked at his instruments and saw that his engine had stopped and a fire warning light was flashing. He tried to deploy his auxiliary power, but the lever broke off in his hand. He realized he had no choice but to eject. Ejecting at such a high altitude and speed was extremely dangerous. Rankin was not wearing a pressure suit, which meant he was exposed to the frigid air, the low oxygen, and the rapid decompression. He felt his abdomen swell and blood leak from his eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. He suffered from frostbite, especially on his left hand, where his glove had been ripped off. He managed to breathe from his emergency oxygen supply, but he had no idea how long it would last. After about 10 seconds, he reached the top of the thunderstorm. He expected his parachute to open automatically at 10,000 feet, but the storm had affected the barometric switch and it opened prematurely. This meant he had to endure the full fury of the thunderstorm for much longer than he had anticipated. He was tossed around by powerful updrafts and downdrafts that made him spin and vomit. He was pelted by hailstones that bruised his body. He was surrounded by lightning that he described as blue blades, several feet thick and thunder that he could feel in his bones. He was drenched by rain that forced him to hold his breath to avoid drowning. Rankin had no sense of time or direction. He had no idea how high he was or how fast he was falling. He had no control over his parachute or his body. He was at the mercy of the storm and he prayed for a miracle. After what seemed like an eternity, Rankin felt a sudden calm. He saw the sky clear and the ground appear. He had made it through the storm and he was about to land. He braced himself for impact and hit the trees. He was tangled in his parachute and in pain, but he was alive. He looked at his watch and saw that it was 6.40 p.m. He had been in the air for 40 minutes, falling through a thunderstorm. Rankin was not out of danger yet. He was in a remote area with no sign of civilization. He was injured and exhausted. He had to find help before nightfall or before his condition worsened. He gathered his strength and started walking. He followed a stream, hoping it would lead him to a road or a house. He walked for about three miles until he saw a light in the distance. It was a farmhouse and he approached it, hoping for assistance. The farmer who opened the door was shocked to see Rankin. He was covered in blood bruises and mud. He was shivering and barely coherent. He told the farmer his name and that he was a pilot who had ejected from his plane. The farmer did not believe him at first, but he saw Rankin's uniform and his parachute. He realized he was telling the truth and he invited him in. He gave him some water and called the local hospital. Rankin was admitted to the hospital in Ahoski, North Carolina. He was treated for frostbite, decompression and internal injuries. He was lucky to be alive and he knew it. He had survived a fall from the edge of space through a thunderstorm and into a forest. He had defied the odds and the laws of nature. He had ridden the thunder and lived to tell the tale. Rankin's story made headlines around the world. He was hailed as a hero and a miracle. He was interviewed by reporters and visited by officials. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and the Purple Heart. He wrote a book about his experience called The Man Who Rode the Thunder, which became a bestseller. He retired from the military and lived a long and happy life. He died in 2009 at the age of 88. William Rankin was a man who faced death 
and survived. He was a man who witnessed the power and beauty of nature and shared it with the world. He was a man who rode the thunder and inspired generations. He was a man who lived a remarkable life and left a lasting legacy.